Most often times it's the smaller details that can easily be overlooked and this can really have a massive effect in terms of the overall quality of an artwork. It's important for us to always consider the smaller details and how they can be used as these contextualizing features that can be a great addition visually to the artwork itself. That being said, there are so many different unique objects and contextualizing features that we could look at and in this particular video we will be looking at how to draw a chain. Now learning how to draw a chain is really useful because because it's quite a timeless structure that hasn't necessarily changed from the medieval ages all the way to the modern era, which makes it a really versatile visual addition to many types of artworks that can kind of surpass various time periods and can be utilized in so many creative ways. So with that being said, hey guys, my name is Matt. Welcome to another video by artincontext.org where we explore various art related topics. And in today's video, we will be looking specifically at how to draw a chain. Now we begin our drawing with a simple line where we use our HP pencils to kind of indicate what kind of flow and length we would like our chain to have. You can keep your chain quite straight if you'd like, however it's a little more interesting and fun to play around with movement in terms of how the chain flows and this just provides us with a unique opportunity and challenge in terms of how to work creating unique movements within the links of the chain. Now once we have established a line we're going to move on to actually sketching the chain. Now we will carry on by drawing each link in the chain. Chains are made up of all sorts of different links however in this tutorial we will keep it quite simple in terms of how we uh, draw our chain links so we can begin by drawing an oval like shape at one of the ends of our line that we have established on our page now think of it as drawing the number zero however you want to keep the sides of the chain quite straight um, with these kind of curved edges so the idea is to kind of think about the chain links being a number zero or the letter O but we kind of keeping the sides of the links quite straight so we do want to represent this zero number um, or this letter O type shape within each link but we do want to keep the long side or the length of each link quite straight. Now we want to keep our chain link drawing quite light for now uh, while we work out how the links connect to one another. So especially for the links that we only get a side view of, we want to make sure that they are placed within the full loop links uh, in a way that makes sense obviously as they connect to one another. They should start to seem as if they are moving through the loop. So we also want to take our time making sure each link is the same in length. Now as we proceed we do want to make sure that we take our time on drawing and erasing as you work out how the links should fit together in a way that makes sense. We want them to be the same in height, width and thickness. So remember each loop should look like the number zero or the letter O with straight sides and arches on the bottom and the top of the loop. Now as you proceed you do want to make sure that you use the line that you drew in the first step to help guide you in the formation on how you draw your chain. So take your time getting the shape of each link right as well as how they link into one another. Remember when the links are viewed from the side we won't see the crossover that the link um, or of how the links kind of go into one another. So except we will see only the side of that link moving into the loop of another. Using your ruler for the straight sides of the chain to make them more realistic in their structure is kind of the intention here as we proceed with drawing each link. Also allow yourself to use your eraser as a tool to help you form your chain links by drawing and erasing as you go. You'll find that sometimes as you draw each link it might not be right the first time so this process at this early stage is about erasing, tweaking, editing and kind of forming the general flow of your various links within your chain. Now once we have basically established the general um, sketch and outline of the chain we're going to proceed to actually adding in some shading of the chain. Now this is where we basically work out the, the three dimensional qualities of each link within the chain through the process of shading. So the way in which you shade the link is quite simple and can be quite sporadic uh, and this is because metallic surfaces reflect light in various directions uh, especially if they are curved and in the case for a link chain or the links within our chain drawing we are drawing quite a simple um, chain which means the links are these kind of uh, curved structures or curved um, rods that kind of create these loops um, which are then obviously connected to one another so the idea here is to use our shading very strategically uh, in order to emphasize the curved nature so what we do want to do is we want to leave negative um, or untouched space in the center of the links as if there were these white strips that run through the length of the rods in each 
each link of our chain. Now the idea is that we're trying to create these very subtle gradients that kind of shift from dark to light and ultimately leaving a negative space that runs through the center or the larger surface area within the rods in each of our links. Now the idea is that this is basically going to represent this quality of reflecting light but the general idea is to think about the actual textural nature of each of these links and obviously because it's a metal structure it has this very hard surface which has a very effective um, ability to reflect light off of its surface so we can also play around with the shading in each link so this is where we can start to consider making the connection areas or the parts of each link where they connect to one another slightly darker in terms of shading. We do want to create these gradients though within our links, whether they are small or larger, but the idea is to definitely work with these moments of keeping negative space in the areas or the larger surface areas within the links. And this tends to be on the straightened uh, sides or lengths within each link, the, the elongated rod um, qualities or features within each of our links that would necessarily be more exposed to a light source. But as the links start to connect to one another, we can then start to make these shadows slightly darker. So as long as we leave strips of negative space in each link, then we will have the effect of light refraction in each link. So this means you can leave some negative space in the loops every now and then. However, make sure to leave negative space in the straight sections of each link. Now take your time building up some shading using your pencil. The idea is that we're basically going to work with a darker medium later, uh, preferably ballpoint pen. Now the reason we would use ballpoint pen is because ballpoint pen is really effective in terms of creating a very uh, similar effect to that of pencil and that is because the ink comes out quite sparingly so we have a lot of agency over our mark making process. Um, and it's a really good medium to kind of layer on top of pencil marks and it's a great way to kind of give more contrast to your actual chain drawing. Now, once we have given our chain drawing some light shading, we now have a base to shade over uh, using our pen. So using your ballpoint pen, start to shade in your chains using your pencil shading as a way to indicate where exactly you should shade with your ballpoint pen. Now, we just wanna make sure we take our time with each link. The idea is to kind of move from one side of your chain and move through each link all the way to the last link within your chain. Again, the idea is to think about light and shadow and how to represent this uh, metallic quality within your chain. Now, remember, steel is quite a hard surface so it is really effective in terms of reflecting light or light being reflected off of the surface of that metallic structure and what happens is when light reflects off of the surface it creates a very highly contrasted quality between shadowed areas and illuminated or highlighted areas so the idea is that you can actually play around with which areas you leave some negative space in in each link but the intention is to leave some negative space um, in each of your links. So as we shade, we just want to make sure that we take our time with each link and especially because we're using ballpoint pen, we definitely want to make sure that we are being cautious. Obviously, using something like a pen, you are more susceptible to making mistakes uh, that we obviously can't take back. So really take your time, make sure you're using your pencil shading to guide your pen shading process. Now, another specific thing to focus on in terms of our uh, chain drawing is the links that are viewed from a side angle. Now, naturally, we can see that the link um, or the distant part of the link that is viewed from the side is still visible as it moves through the loop. So naturally we can see kind of like a background of these side view links and a foreground of these side view links. We just want to make sure that we are adding um, a lot of shading to the part of that side view link that is seen in the background. Um, and kind of creating a distinction between the part of it that sits in the foreground to create this quality of depth. So every time we see a link that is seen from the side view, we just wanna make sure that we are darkening or adding a lot of shading to the areas where it connects to or kind of uh, crosses into a, another link uh, or loop of another link. And that way we just create this quality of depth. But otherwise guys, this is the general idea of how to kind of create a chain drawing in terms of thinking about the link, how to connect links, and ultimately how to integrate shading. The intention from this point onward is to just build up your tonal values with your pen shading process, making sure you use your pencil shading um, as a means of guiding your pen shading process, and then simply building up those tonal values, making sure you're leaving negative space in each link to establish that highlight or quality of light reflecting off of the metallic surface. Um, but simply taking your time, going slowly, building up those tonal values and thinking about creating depth, especially in the links that are seen 
seen from a side angle and then lastly making sure that you are using these very sharp straight lines for the uh, length quality of each link within our chain drawing but otherwise guys that is the general idea this is the process of how to create a chain drawing very simple very fun and can be used in so many ways for so many different artwork ideas if you did like this video please let us know in the comment section below if you are also interested in related topics where we explore drawing various structures and unique objects um, please do like the video please do subscribe this helps us to grow the channel which ultimately enables us to make more art related content for you guys but otherwise guys thanks again for tuning in that is it from me today until next time cheers